all of that, we need his Holy Spirit. I think about all the people who lived before they had a Bible to look at. All they had to rely on was their relationship with God and the Holy Spirit. And so we need the Holy Spirit, and that's what we're going to be sharing about today. Because just being able to quote a lot of scriptures is nice, but that doesn't guarantee that you have the Holy Spirit. And that there are a lot of people who, they know a lot of the Bible, but you still need the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you can be saying all the right things, but not being the right way as a person. And so, let's say a prayer before we start. Let's just thank God. Let's say this out loud together. Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you. that you are turning every negative situation around. And health is coming back into us. Strength is coming back into us. Joy is coming back into us. And a fresh outpouring of your spirit. And now I'm going to receive this from you by faith and allow you to do a great work in me and through me. See, the Lord wants to work in us and through us. And that's why it says, greater is he, referring to the Lord that's in us. Sometimes we don't feel like the Lord's in there. And sometimes we just feel like, bleh. And I understand that. But he's still in there regardless of how you feel. Well, feelings are not reliable. This is why the Lord went out of his way to say, when you're feeling really weak, when you're feeling really lousy, don't go tell everybody. It says, let the weak say, and let's say it together, I am strong. I am strong. So I spent the last month walking around the house going, I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Felt like saying something else. I felt like saying something else. But this is true even when it's not sickness. Maybe we're just, we're just burnt out. We still need to say, I am strong. And this will turn it around. So what I want to share with you from God's word today, a lot of this is going to be in Matthew chapter 11. So you can look it up on your phone or your Bible. Or better yet, just store it in your heart and mind. Okay, because the important thing is taking God's word into us and then allowing him to do an awesome work. And this is the first time I've given a message where I found a hair in my mouth. <laughs> and I just pulled it out. I don't know how that happened, but I think it's my own hair, thank God. Uh, but, you know, sometimes people find a hair in their soup. Well, I found a hair in my mouth. So I, I, I got rid of the hair. So now I'm fully loaded and ready to go. So, you know how the Bible says, get the speck out of your eye, get the log out of your eye? Well, sometimes you have to get the hair out of your mouth. Or sometimes the wax out of your ears. And so when I talk about today, the message is having hearing ears. And... We're going to have to really listen close to get what the Lord is saying. Because I've read for years and years, Jesus says, this is from Matthew eleven fifteen. Jesus says, and he says this over and over again before he speaks. He, has, he says, he that has hearing ears, let him hear. He that has hearing ears. So we need to talk about this to understand what Jesus is saying because it just sounds like he's saying, listen up. That's what I used to think it meant whenever Jesus said, he who has hearing ears, let him hear. So I just thought Jesus was going, hey everybody, settle down, pay attention, listen up. But as I began to study and look further into it, the Lord was showing me, and this is what I want to share with you, that that's not what was going on. In fact, Jesus 
made a point of always using the word hear, hear. Let him that has hearing ears hear. He doesn't use the word listening. And do you know, in some of the newer translations of the Bible, they change the, the words in this scripture from hear to, to listen, and it completely changes the meaning. Now, I'll give you an example of a scripture where they change the, in the newer translations. In James 1.19, it says something very important. It says, let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, and, and slow to anger. There's three things there. If we do those three things, our life is going to be a lot better. It says to be swift to hear, slow to speak. Have you ever been trying to have a conversation and, and you're trying to say something, the other person cuts you off and they, they, you know. Well, see, if we're slow to speak, we're not going to have that problem with people. We, we wait our turn. <laughs> we let them do all the talking and sometimes you say, are they ever going to stop? So I can get my turn? And they're like this, right? See? So you know you try to say something, they raise their voice and they cut you off. I'm not done talking yet. Shut up. They want to do all the talking. So that we can solve that problem in our relationships when we're slow to speak. We wait our turn. But here it says swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Because a lot of times when we get angry, we don't know all the details. We don't know the, we just hear something. I can't believe that person did that. And then we get all mad at it. We don't know all the details. So quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. In the newer translations, it says be quick to listen. It completely changes the meaning, completely. I'm going to explain why. If listening and hearing mean the same thing, why are there two different words? You don't need two different words for the same thing, right? And so the important thing is hearing, hearing. I'm telling you, if you're hearing the Holy Spirit, one line, just one little line in the Bible can change your whole life. But wouldn't you rather just have one line change your life than read a whole bunch of stuff and it goes in one ear and out the other? That's what listening is. Listening is outward. It's what you're hearing from the outside. It's what's going on outside. You can hear all kinds of things going on on the outside, the, uh, Jesus said there are many voices in the world. There's all kinds of voices yakking all over the place, saying all kinds of stuff. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's saying stuff. You can listen, and it goes in one ear, out the other, and nothing changes. In fact, the words that are spoken are of no lasting effect. But what does Jesus say about his words? He says, my words bring life, healing, transformation. And so we want to hear Jesus' words. We don't want to just listen and have them go in one ear and out the other. How does that work then? What is hearing then? If we know that listening is outward, it's just kind of hearing what's going on around you. We know that's what listening is. And have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you could tell they're not hearing you? And then you say, you're not hearing me. And, and then say, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm listening. And they can repeat everything word for word that you said. But you're frustrated and you're not satisfied. Why? Because they listened, but they didn't hear. So here's a poem from a song I heard that impacted me. Um, it kind of had a, it's a, it's a four-line poem, but it, it, it impacted me. And the name of the poem is called Turn a Deaf Ear. And the chorus of the poem goes like this.
turn a deaf ear, turn a deaf ear. I can listen. I just can't hear. And I started to think about that and meditate on that. The last line, I can listen. I just can't hear. And this is the problem. This is why even Christians can get into deception and get into messed up stuff they shouldn't be involved in. How can that happen? They can listen. They just didn't hear. They didn't really hear what Jesus was saying. And so the way that you hear Jesus is you have to get to the heart of the matter. The heart of God. The heart of what Jesus is really saying. The heart of what matters to God. The heart of what's important to God. Do you ever stop and think, what's important to God? What does God really care about? Most of us know what we care about. But do we ever stop before we present God with our Christmas list of what we want? Before we present God with our prayer list of all the things we want? Do we ever stop to hear the heart of God and actually say, well, God, what, what's important to you? What do you want? And so it's not a coincidence Listen carefully. That the first four letters of the word here, H E A R, if you add one more letter, it spells heart. When we hear, our heart is involved. When we listen, it's just our ears. God wants your heart. He wants you to hear with your heart. He wants you to hear with your heart. He wants you to think with your heart. Our heart does think. Many of us have not really considered this idea of thinking with your heart. How do you do that? Somebody says, well, what's your gut feel? What's your deep down gut telling you? Well, this sounds like a great idea. It all makes sense, but something in here just doesn't feel quite right. See, that's thinking with your heart. You listen to your heart, you will do the right thing. God talks to us from the inside. This is why listening is not enough. Listening is outward, hearing is inward. And when you listen with your heart, you will feel and know you'll really know what the Lord is saying to you personally, to you personally. And this is a wonderful thing when this happens. See, this is why later in this book, in this book of Matthew, there's a kind of a disturbing chapter where these people come to Jesus and they list off all their achievements and accomplishments and, and they say, look, Lord, we cast out the demon and we did this and this and Jesus says you know what I don't even know you guys he says I never knew you that sounds rude but it's not the Lord is not rude basically what he was saying is you guys you listened but you didn't hear and if you don't hear then you don't really know God I mean if you ever just ask yourself what's God like is he nice or is he, is he mad and he's ready to with his, wait with his lightning bolt to strike somebody? What, what's God like? I mean, this is huge. And we're going to have communion today. 
And so we can go ahead and pass that out while, while I'm sharing. But this next part is going to be the most important part because there's a really awesome promise in the Bible in Matthew 7 24 it says whoever hears shall become wise notice it doesn't say listen see a person who's listening can repeat everything right they can repeat it I learned how to listen in, in all through high school and college. I learned how to listen. And I went to my classes and I listened and, and I, I, you know, I took my tests and I got pretty good grades and I did all right, you know? And then when I graduated, do you know most of that stuff? I don't remember any of it. How many of you remember all the stuff you, you, you learned in school? Uh, because we listened, we got real good at listening. And then we could answer all the questions on the test. But see, that was a test of the mind. It wasn't a test of the heart. Do you know what the Bible says about the heart? This really blew my mind. It says, your heart shall live forever. So the heart of the matter is important then. Because that's forever. What does it say about knowledge for those of us? It's good to know stuff. But it says knowledge shall pass away. Knowledge is temporary. And it says that knowledge puffs people up and get proud. So here's a change of direction, a change of perspective, a change of mindset. I'm no longer thinking, God, I just want to know all this stuff so I can be really smart. No, instead, I'm saying, God, I want to hear you. I want to hear you so I know you, so I know what you're like. Because if I know what you're like, then I really can be like you. And I can treat people the way that you treat people. That's awesome. And so we look at this and we realize the benefit from hearing is that the Lord knows us then and we know him and our heart transforms to become like the Lord's heart because we know the Lord is gentle, the Lord is kind, the Lord is merciful, the Lord is patient, the Lord is not forceful, he never tries to force things. Uh, these are all clues. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's peace, there's love, and there's joy. Have you ever just learned a bunch of stuff, but after you learned it all, you just felt worse? Because why? Because listening and learning doesn't make you better. But hearing does. Hearing makes you better. Hearing makes you more like the Lord. And so let's listen to what the Lord says about the communion as we get ready to do this. Because I think there's something we're supposed to do here this morning that's right in the Bible, and I'll read it to you. And, And so it'll, it'll really help us here because the, the Lord has so much in here. And like I said, instead of just having a million scriptures, we need the ones today, right now, that God has for us. So here it comes as you get ready to take the communion. This is between you and the Lord. But you know Jesus already paid the bill, right? You know that Jesus already died for all your sins. So some people could say, well, 
God's got me covered, so what do I need to take the communion for? Ever you thought about that? If, if Jesus has already done it all, why, why do you take the communion? What's the point? It's to hear what the Lord is saying today. Not what the Lord said last week or what the Lord told you a year ago. It's what to hear what the Lord is saying to you today. That's why every day is fresh with God that says, Behold, all things become new. And there's something personal for each one of you here that God so that you can rise higher and go forward. Aren't you glad I'm not the one telling you what to do or how to change? Ah, it's so much better when you hear it straight from, from the throne of God. But here's the key. It's in Corinthians 12, 11. It says, let a person examine themselves. See, so I look down here and my zipper's up. I'm okay. Let a person examine themselves. Notice this is something God's asking you to do. Do you know a, a, a pastor, it's not his job to go around examining everybody. And aren't you glad I'm not going around examining all of you? You know, a pastor's job is to feed the flock with the word of God. Did you also know it's not your job to go around examining everybody else? I can't believe what that person did. And they say they are a Christian. No, don't go down that road. That's the wrong road. But here's the right road. Examine yourself. What do you do? How do you do this? It's easy. It's actually very easy. You just get quiet with the Lord. You say, Lord, is there anything in my life right now that you want me to make? changes, improvements. Lord, is there anything going on in my life right now that doesn't belong there? The Bible is very clear. It says, let us set aside anything that's keeping us from God's best. You know, I like the word set aside. It doesn't make a big issue about it. I mean, you could get down on your knees and go, I'm no good, I'm a sinner, I'm terrible, I'm lousy, blah, blah, blah. But that's not what the Lord says. He says, anything that's going on that's not good, that's not making your life better, that's dragging you down, take it and set it aside. You just say, you know what, I'm done with this. This is a waste of time. This is not helping. This is, this is like me spinning my wheels. It's like digging a hole and putting stuff in a bucket with a hole in the bucket. It's just falling out the other end. There's no benefit here. This is the key. Instead of saying, God, can I get away with this? Because that's a lot of times people, is it okay if I do this, God? You know, I know it's a little screwed up, but is it okay if I do this? Lord's saying, is this benefiting you? Is this helping you? Is this making your life better? And if the answer is no, set it aside. Just set it aside. So we know we're supposed to examine ourselves. But there's nowhere in the Bible where it says to examine other people. And here in the same chapter, and this is the communion, this is all written in the context of the communion. It doesn't say come up with a list of all the people you're mad at and say, Lord, this person, they hurt my feelings and this person ripped me off. And they, no, that's not what the communion is. Look at the next verse. For if, there's the word if. This is Corinthians 11.31. For if we would judge ourselves, just be honest to God, if we would judge ourselves, then we will not be judged. I love the second half. We will not be judged. See, many times we don't realize God's tool of judgment is he uses other people. 
And then you, next thing you, why are all these people picking on me? Why are all these people pointing out what I'm doing wrong? Could it be because we're not judging ourselves? Welcome, come on in. So judging yourself, you know everybody's got stuff wrong with them, right? You, you know that, right? Being a Christian doesn't mean I, I have nothing wrong with me. Being a Christian means your sins are forgiven, you're a child of God, you're born again, and you're a work in progress. Can you be comfortable knowing that there's stuff wrong with you and not hate yourself? Because faith is believing that when God reveals what's wrong, it's because he's going to make a change, an improvement. And that's how it works. And so I'll read these scriptures again. Let each person examine themselves. And if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. One last thing before we take the communion. Very important. I struggled with this one for a while because I didn't know how to do it. Then the Lord says, we must repent. That means turn away from the things that are wrong in our life. And I, I said, Lord, but 